My co-host, New York Times best-selling author, the social assassin, John Gilstrap. Johnny, good morning to you. Good morning, sir. And also, he is a man who has co-hosted on this program, formerly known as the Sarge, the Badger, also the delegate, Michael Hike. Good morning, Michael. Good morning, Robert. Nice to have all these names. It is. You're a man of many business cards. Yeah. Where does the Badger come from? Uh, well, you have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long story. Okay, all right. It's a long story. It's a good. It's a good. Okay. It's a good nickname, though. Yeah, right? yeah. It's a good story. It had to do with uh, Height uh, was in a mood one day down in, in the Capitol, and he was going to go after somebody that he later learned was very important to the governor and the governor's budgeting process. Uh-huh. <laughs> and and when Height found out that his attacking was probably not going to go over well in the long run. As he found out who the person he was attacking was, <laughs> the badger quickly had to make good on his mistake. <laughs> he had to retreat a little bit. <laughs> okay. There are, there are certain houses you don't burn down in Charleston. And he was burning down the wrong house. Yeah, the badger has a bit of a temper sometimes. Uh-huh. Yeah. When he feels he's on the correct side of being right, it doesn't matter who the other person is. Sometimes he doesn't know who the other person is, though, and that's the problem. <laughs> I've been there. <laughs> We're good buddies now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how he got the nickname the Badger. <laughs> uh, back in studio after uh, two days with uh, candidates in the political forums. Uh, big thanks to the folks who helped pull that off, including uh, my uh, co-host here, John Gilstrap, who along with Bill Stubblefield and Steve Pearson uh, did uh, the lion's share of the questioning of the candidates. And John, this was your first form. What was your takeaway from it? I thought it was a really interesting exercise to, to be that involved into local politics and, and to just, I was going to say sausage making because it's really not that. I just, there's a lot of people very passionate about this area and it was, it was an honor to be in, in, involved in the process mm-hmm. and to witness that, that level of, of passion and, and, and everything that passion brings and Mr. Height, you are fortunate enough to not have been opposed in uh, a primary, and I think when you first ran, you weren't opposed either. That that is correct. Uh, but I have been on both sides of that before. Um, I think early on, when, when I was first running, uh, I didn't have to debate anybody, but I had the opportunity to to sit on the other side of the table and uh, and answer some questions uh, posed by the moderators. Um, so it's interesting to see, and and I've been a moderator before, so it's interesting to see both sides of the table. And, um, you know, I'm, I, I sort of wish sometimes I'd have a, an opponent. I, I enjoy debating. I enjoy talking about uh, the issues. So um, sometimes, uh, you know, it's it's disappointing that I don't have a, a an opponent. Not necessarily well, in a primary, but in the general. <laughs> Thanks to all the candidates who were able to make it, those who uh, who showed up, those who said they would show up did. If uh, your candidate wasn't there, and that really, as it worked out, it was a Republican primary opponent because uh, of the races we were covering. None of the seats were challenged by Democrats in the primary. If they were, we would have had Democrats there, too. Sure. Uh, there were some Republicans who uh, couldn't make it because of work schedules, some who chose to not make it. And, and some who couldn't bother to be make it to, to make it maybe from <laughs> what I gathered in some of my text messages or whatever. But uh, rest assured, we tried it for all those uh, folks. Let's welcome in our first guest of the day, Superintendent of Schools, Ron Stevens. Ron, good morning to you, sir. Good morning, gentlemen. How are we doing? We're doing pretty good, good. man. Excellent. Yeah, happy spring. Excellent. Glad to be here. The Badger, huh? The Badger, yes. I hope I give you no reason to be a Badger today. Well, let's hope not. <laughs> I hope not. You know, I know you have something very important to discuss today in regards to the school levy. Uh, yes, yes, would, uh, you know, uh, relish the opportunity to talk about continuing our school excess levy. Sure, let's get it. Yeah. Um, well, you know, coming May the 14th on the ballot, there will be um, uh, the item for the school excess levy. Um, this is continuing a school excess levy that Berkeley County has had continuously for 75 years. Um, you know, things are a little bit different. The last... Uh, I believe it was in 2022 with the um, um, legislation that changed um, how um, excess levy schools can go to communities and ask for uh, support from special elections to now uh, only being able to do those during primary and general elections. So really fine tunes your focus and uh, just want to get the information out so that we have educated voters that's uh, that's the key we don't want uh, 
people uh, being in the polls and um, being asked to make decisions without information. So I, I think everybody that's that's running uh, um, or has anything on the election would hope that uh, everybody has the facts about it. So what before you this? go before you go too deep into mm -hmm. the weeds, if you could explain to the the listening audience the difference between the levy and the excess levy and and how each one. Uh, fund the, the school system. Thank you. I'll give you a quarter later on. Thank you for leading in with that, <laughs> with that question. That's got to be worth more than a quarter. <laughs> that's, that's page one. Um, yes, uh, bonds and levies are, are the two ways that school systems can go to their communities and ask for uh, support from the community. And, um, you know, recently we have we had an experience with, with a bond and our community supported the largest uh, bond uh, ever in in West Virginia and bonds are when you come to the public with um, a, a specific set of, of projects and the cost of the, of the bond is how much the projects are going to be and you try to balance what you, what is asked um, and you know the mnemonic device that we use is bonds are for building uh, buildings building uh, infrastructure and those kinds of things. Levy, uh, Levy supports the the uh, operating uh, general operating budget, and um, you know we're in a competitive um, competitive market here around all the counties that surround us and areas that surround Berkeley County. Uh, to know that we're in a pro uh, education community that has supported a school excess levy for 75 uh, years um, is. is it's nice to know um, the school access levy supports all the learning, you know, bonds, building, levy, learning, uh, all the learning activities, um, textbooks, technology, uh, learning experiences. It supports the people. Uh, this is uh, this is how Berkeley <coughs> County is able to uh, compete with some of the uh, surrounding areas uh, in forms of, um, you know, our um, I'm drawing a blank here for a second it, with our um, insurance, uh, dental insurance, or um, um, you know, it's that's not part of the state minimum. You know, our dental plan, our family um, dental plan is uh, is important. Um, also, our vision plan um, is important to our employees. Uh, we have uh, community partners that benefit from being a part of this. Uh, our our uh, public libraries, Parks and Rec, uh, the Health Department, our 4-H Extension Office, they all receive direct funding from the school excess levy uh, when it passes. So, um, you know, that's it's kind of it in a nutshell. Uh, I mean, there's we could talk for a, a long period of time about all of the, uh, the benefits and uh, hope that we were able to get into some of those uh, today. I did bring uh, some rack cards that we have uh, to put out to to share with everybody just so you can see some of the the basic numbers that we have what percentage of the vote is needed to carry this excess levy ron one over 50 percent that'll do it yeah one over 50 percent um and uh you know we're we're just wanting to get the word out um you know law specifically states that i am uh, i am bound to give factual information not really to um, go out and campaign be, be campaigning yeah. for or or against uh, items like this so uh, the information that that we want to provide is that you know unlike th the regular uh, school levy that you see uh, on your on your um, uh, paperwork your taxes at home the excess school levy 100 percent of the money that's raised by Berkeley County stays in Berkeley County and it goes to to uh, promote all of the learning uh, activities in schools, uh, it supports athletics, it supports arts, it supports uh, extracurriculars, it supports the four community partners that we uh, that I just talked about, um, and it supports the employees that uh, that work in the school system. So, on a hundred thousand dollar appraised value of a residence, this will uh, cost you two hundred and seventy to two hundred and seventy five dollars a year. You have the homestead exemption between two hundred and sixteen and two hundred and twenty per one hundred thousand dollars in appraised value. Well, the, the important yes, uh, the the important part of that is that um, that's that's where we have right now. You're already uh, you paying. Know, it. We're we're already on that. This we're, is not in addition to that. Well, there it, it is a it, 
the proposed each time that this goes before the voters there's a there's a proposed rate and the proposed rate um there is a difference um but the difference amounts to um i think the math came out to about five five dollars per year uh per one hundred thousand uh like you were talking about mm -hmm. um but that is over time and again this is this is something that berkeley county has supported for 75 years and you know certainly um certainly know that it is you know a, a well supported public education system uh goes hand in hand with economics of of an area so it, it is an economic driver for for berkeley county you know we are one of the largest employers in the county in the state as a matter of fact so mm -hmm. um, extremely important to to uh, see the relationship between uh, it being the uh, driver for economics in Berkeley County versus some of the other counties uh, in the state that um, that struggle a little bit um, you know it's um, it's important that uh, that we're able to maintain the level that we're at right now and uh, you know, it's it's difficult enough to compete. Um, you know, and I th I think that our county residents have have recognized that for years. So this is an up or down vote, right? It's it's yes or no. Yes. So in the nightmare scenario, if it's if it's a no vote, the consequence <clears throat> is no teachers. Well, um, this uh, on the sheet that you have there in front of you, this um, the school excess levy makes up about 15 percent of Berkeley County Schools operating budget. And uh, that is uh, equates to about forty six million dollars uh, per year. And, you know, all of the the items that we've talked about would be affected by that. Uh, so it's difficult to say no teachers. You know, we got to have the teachers to, to put in front of the students but where would we be able to make uh, those cuts um, you know 80 to 85 percent of um, any public school that's operating uh, at least in West Virginia that I'm aware of um, 80 to 85 percent of that budget goes towards its personnel so you know it yeah there will be there will be a lot of a uh, lot of difficult decisions that have to be made we're currently in a school, or we're currently in a cycle for uh, support of our school excess levy, and it um, expires June thirtieth of two thousand twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And you know, it, we have this year to be able to ask for an extension of that. If it is unsuccessful, as you alluded to, then we would be looking at a minimum of a full year without that support uh, in Berkeley County before we could even ask the, commu the uh, community for support again, because we couldn't ask again until 2026. I looked at the sample ballot yesterday, and this particular question has a lot more words, and a lot, there are a lot of numbers, and it's several paragraphs of, it's pretty complex. It is. And, uh, and there's hundreds of millions of dollars that are listed within that verbiage. Is, is this the same thing we're talking about here uh, with within the, the the verbiage on the ballot I know I'm, I'm catching you cold here so you, you are catching me cold and I'm not sure what you read okay uh, to, to be honest with you about that but and I didn't know you're gonna be here so I could be conflating two issues <laughs> yeah, so it, it, yeah, it's, it, um, this has to go out uh, to newspapers mm -hmm. um, and I'm a, I'm surprised that you've seen it already so you we may be looking at a different okay uh, a, uh, uh, there is a there is a school excess levy that you know every county in the state has to uh, um, you know put out there and it I'm not do sure do you know how this is worded this. Ron I do not I'm not sure what he's referring to or how this is going to be worded we're, we're we're putting that together with legal counsel to put it out so you haven't even released the word of it yet it has not been out oh, okay to, then I yeah. unsay what I just said <laughs> <laughs> Right. I was trying not to be a badger. <laughs> but, now, but ultimately, though, when the, no matter which way this is worded, to continue the levy, you want people to vote yes? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Yes. It would uh, vote yes to continue the levy. That is correct. And so, it would that levy would uh, come into play July 1 of 2025 to extend where we are now. Now, looking into the future, delegate height, is this a place we've talked about locality pay and the hard times getting locality pay done? Is this could 
Could we achieve the locality play hypothetically? Could we achieve the locality pay goal through a future excess? Yeah, that's already being done. Is it okay? Yeah, so we, we have the ability to have an excess levy, and, and this this excess levy could go towards salaries, if that's what we chose. But we would have to increase the numbers in the levy significantly to pay a locality pay, like you're suggesting. Well, locality pay has to be done by the state. Um, yeah, it, just to call it that or to have it be well, it effect. has to be done by the state because mm-hmm. once it's awarded to employees that's not something you can take back um, a school excess levy that we like this we have to we can pass along to employees and benefits and some salary supplements um, but there's always a risk that at the end of five years that school excess levy is not supported so it cannot be built into their their salary like a locality pay could be and that has to be something that would be done at the state level so there is a little bit of difference between that and i only know enough to be dangerous to to talk about that so um this can help take the edge off of locality pay but it is not um the same as locality it it can be used as a salary supplement correct and we do it wouldn't be part of their salary per se and i know because i have a delegate that sits right beside me that's a teacher from um marshall county and they have an excess levy um to the tune that he gets an additional fifteen thousand dollars a year towards his salary now $15,000? Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand dollars a wow. year. Now, Marshall County is one of the richest counties in the state, and their people don't pay the excess levy. Their severance taxes pay the levy because they have oil, gas, coal, all in Marshall County. So the people don't bear the brunt of it. Um, the, the the severance taxes didn't bear the brunt didn't of Jefferson it. County reap similar benefits when the casino was ahead of the curve in surrounding states with table game. Uh, tabletop gambling that, that's possible i don't I know for sure but yeah that would be possible as well unfortunately here in, in berkeley and even in morgan we don't have the natural resources or the casinos or whatever to supplement it so this would all go on the people um if, if we were to try to do an excess le- and this particular one will be on the people as well but to to john's point if we tried to supplement salaries like they do in marshall county and some of the other counties some i know dodgers judges uh, there's there's certain counties over there that have an excessive amount of uh of, of natural resources and their school systems reap the benefit of that so let, uh, let we're me not let, one of them. yeah let me pick up on that just a little bit we 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 do offer some supplemental um income to, to our employees, um, and, you know, and that supplemental income is in salary and benefits. And, you know, thanks to the school excess levy that's been mm-hmm. approved by Berkeley County, as I said, for 75 years, um, you know, the, the average teacher's salary, uh, there is, um, you know, there's health insurance, there's dental uh, vision, uh, there's a there's a housing allowance that we're we're able to uh, include. There's a sick leave bonus that we're able to include in there, and there is actually a salary supplement that w- that is provided to the salaries um, as a result of, of this. But it is not considered part of the regular salary. It, mm-hmm. um, so for Berkeley County, the average teacher. You know, it's not fifteen thousand. Uh, we'd love for it to be fifteen thousand, sure. um, but it, with all of the benefits and everything included, it's it's a little over nine thousand um, that the average teacher can can uh, thank the the um, salary or the um, excess school levy. excess levy for, and for all of our service personnel, the average service personnel receives over uh, six thousand dollars in um, salary and benefits from that. So. Uh, while it is a little bit different than the uh, locality pay, it, it it does provide an opportunity for some balance uh, in Berkeley County where we can be competitive, um, but it has to be continually renewed. Anything on this subject that we haven't covered, Ron, that you want to make sure people know about? I've got 100 pages worth of notes on this, so I'm 100% certain that there's things that we haven't covered. But pick, I th- Pick I out think some of the hit, more important things. Well, I think that we've hit uh, most of the uh, important things. And, you know, the one thing that uh, I get asked a lot, um, and, and by the way, we have all of this information on Berkeley County's uh, webpage. Um, 
You can go to our levy link and you can look at all of the information that we're talking about here, the chart that you were referring to for every one hundred thousand dollars of you know of your um, um, your home, how it breaks down. It's all available there for people to to look at in detail. Um, it, that is available, but we also collect questions you know frequently asked questions and we're keeping those out there because i know if if you have a question or if you have a question somebody else is going to have the same question so we try to you know keep a, a list of of all of the questions that are asked with responses to them for for people for ready access one of the most uh commonly asked questions is i don't have a kid in Berkeley County that goes to, to school there, or I have a kid and he goes to a, a, a private school, or I've moved here, um, you know, I'm a retiree. Um, why should I pay this, this amount? And, you know, it simply comes down to what we talked about earlier, a supported public school system is an economic driver for the community. And you look no further than the north end of this county um, you know, the Spring Mills campus that was dreamed up and uh, the schools were, were put in place. And look, what, look what's come since then. And again, it's hand in hand. We've got thousands of, of homes. We've got two different hospitals that are represented up there. We've got uh, tons of businesses. You've got a McDonald's and a, and a Walmart that, that appeared on that exit up there. Uh, they just don't come without doing their research. So um, the first thing that com uh, companies do before they decide where to relocate is they send out recon teams and uh, they talk to important people in the district. And guess who is asked to sit down with them every single time? A representative from the school system. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, they want to know about the school system. They want to know about the stability. They want to know what people are paid. They want to know what, you know, what the communities are and you know they do a lot of research um, so all of the things that are being relocated and and moving to berkeley county um, it, again they all go hand in hand with a supported school system well the, the the driver of property values is schools if your house is located in a good school district your house will be worth more money when you go to sell it if your house is in a school district that is not good it, you're having a hard time selling your house. Yes, and, you're exactly. You're not right. going to get the, you're going to get increased home value when you go to sell it. Yeah, I I want to encourage uh, everybody to to think in, in this format. First of all, to have the information to to be able to cast their vote either for or against. And you know, I I I love democracy, and want, I just want people to be educated when they cast their vote. Um, but think of it this way: there, there's a cost to everything. And yes, there is a cost for the school excess levy. It, it has been, um, you know, incurred in Berkeley County for 75 years because that's that's what has been valued here for 75 years. Um, but what would the cost be without it? You know, what would the cost to the community be without it? What would the cost to the employees uh, without it? Um, you know, and a lot of it is this helps us be where we are. Uh, you know, this this is not going to provide any raises. Uh, I actually had somebody say to me, well, I just voted for uh, extra athletic facilities. We, we don't want any more athletic facilities, so why should I vote for this? And I had to tell them exactly your question before. That was covered with a bond. This right. this does nothing with those facilities. This is our operating budget. And um, yeah, I just think that there's some, um, some people that think they know um, and – yeah, we just want to get the information out to them. And in renewing this one, this 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 one, one the one we have now will expire. Is that correct? And that, then this one would just take. So it's not like yes. we're we're adding to. Yes. people are already there paying will, for. There an will not be levy. these will not overlap. The, these would not overlap. The, the one expires on the last day of June 2025. This is to continue at July 1 of 2025. So uh, the difference, uh, I think that I brought up when Rob was talking about this, the difference. There is a difference, but it's it's five dollars per hundred thousand yeah. dollars of your of your home uh, per year. So, um, yeah, it it is a continuation of the of the current school excess levy that would start July one of two thousand twenty five. Ron, I am out of time. Any final words? I, I have plenty uh, of words. <laughs> uh, just want to. There's so many good things that are going on in spring. Uh, you know, spring has sprung. Um, spring sports are in full full swing. Pollen everywhere. Pollen is everywhere. Um, you know, I 
I have a red truck, but uh, uh, it looks like a yellow, mm-hmm. yellowish green truck uh, because of all the pollen. We uh, recognized some people uh, recently at a board meeting. I want to give a shout out to um, to Sarah Porter at Musselman High School, math teacher there. It's been recognized as the um, early career mathematics teacher of the year. Uh, fantastic award. We recognized a number of students with the Battle of the Books recognition. Uh, Karen Greenfield was at our board meeting uh, the other night and we recognized a number of students that were successful there. Um, our regular awards um, for Distinguished Service and uh, Volunteer of the Month were, were passed, uh, passed along. Berkeley County was uh, officially awarded the School uh, Business Authority um, chairperson who is Governor Justice, uh, came to Berkeley County and awarded uh, us $25 million officially. Uh, we have been asking for that to to um, work towards the, the new construction projects. And, you know, the, the award has finally taken place and the cer- ceremonial big check, which I tried to deposit and they wouldn't let me. Uh, Just like in was, semi-pro. Was the, exactly, yeah. exactly. Dukes that. couldn't cash that. You go to, did you go to a really big bank? Corn dogs, Jackie. <laughs> For all these people. <laughs> <laughs> I would have never dreamed I could fit in corn dogs in this, in this, <laughs> this one, but I did. That is the movie, baby. <laughs> um, you know, and then... Um, you know, we had an academic, um, uh, the, the academic uh, showdown, the regional academic showdown, which is a state competition. The regional took place um, recently, and Spring Mills actually took first and second. They entered two teams Ooh. in it and wow. uh, won first and second and will compete at the state level. Um, and the last thing that I do want to say, you know, we're even though it's spring and we just got out of spring break and, you know, we're in – mid-season and spring sports everybody is already starting to talk about plans for end of the year ceremonies and wrapping things up um and having said that we have um one change on our uh, graduations are, are coming the last full week of may um and musselman's actually got moved to sunday so that we could get started on the on the field uh there uh, so we'll turn the field over to the uh, people for um, redoing the field there on mm-hmm. the next day, Monday. Um, so we had to bump baccalaureate. So baccalaureate got moved. Uh, baccalaureate services for uh, the four high schools will take place at Spring Mills High School on May the 5th, uh, which is two weeks early. Uh, earlier may work out uh, better actually but it is uh, May the 5th 3 o'clock Spring Mills High School baccalaureate service uh, for this year's senior class and I'm looking forward to it I've been to a a number of those Mm -hmm. in the past and uh, it's a very good very good uh, ceremony Got them all in? I think I got, well, I've got, I've got plenty, but <laughs> I think that's enough for today. Good to see you, Ron. It was really good to be here. Well, Thank s- you all. Thank s- you, Ron. Send you out with one of your favorite quotes. Corn dogs, Jackie. Corn dogs for all these people. <laughs> That'll do it. <laughs> Superintendent of Schools, Ron Stevens there at 836.